3D back here. The color, black yes. and blue? Yeah. Okay. It's not complied with at all. The only thing that's marked, it's not in compliance. Um, and that AD is a one-time AD, but if the airplane ever gets painted or it right. wears off, you've got to go back and catch it again. Okay. You don't, you don't see the black? See the end of the, let me show you here in the mirror. See okay. the end of the actuator is painted black? No. See the actuator right I, here? I thought it was just painted here. No, it's it, the whole AD says, all right, you see the black at the end of the actuator? You see the actuator? Yes. The round actuator? It's painted black. Okay, the AD says that this edge of this circle must be painted black, oh. and then the back of the stabilizer must be painted black. Got it. So and this gotta... side, it's blue. There's yeah. blue on this one. See, it was painted. Well, go get you some model airplanes. Some black and some blue. And right. Paint. Okay. And this this is just worn off. Yeah, it, it is. It was black. Okay. Just get you some model airplane because right now you're not tickling in compliance. Got it. Okay. And you want yeah. that that color as well. That should be black right there. This should be blue on this side. Okay. There's a problem right there. See that? Yes. Oh my. Yeah, that's not good. This one's loose too, I'll bet you. That's where that noise is coming from. Common screwdriver, huh? Yeah, the clevis bolts. That one's tight, so I don't think that's our noise. Unless it's worn. I don't know. It could be the rod end making the noise. The, the tube rod ends are it, about three years old. Okay. There it is right there. At the rod end? Yeah. Put your hand on it. You can feel it. Put your hand so your finger is touching both pieces. Got it. Yep. And they move it. different from each yeah, other. I feel it. Yeah. yeah. Just that rod end's worn. It's not critical. Keep an eye on it. You know, the last time you looked at this two or three years ago, Right after we replaced that, you said, those aren't good. I said, but they're brand new. He <laughs> said, you don't care. <laughs> well, you know, I've seen new parts come right out of stock that, that make noises. I see you've done the AD to the rudder. Yes. So that's eliminated that, which is a good thing to do. Yeah, both. both yeah, you did both it. of them, right. DW1, yeah. DW2 bracket, okay. It was after they replaced the, uh, the, the, the uh, rudder spar. The rudder spar was changed? It was, and then... I think it probably, uh, it was changed, but, but rather than go through that, what, 500 hour inspection? Well, if you change the spar, that eliminates the AD too. I don't think it did. I thought it did. No, it I've did. never seen anybody do that. It, because the, S, the STC attached here, and right. Bonanza's did not do that. Right. They just went that way, so you could fail again. The beach craft. Yes. There's an awful lot of play in this trim tab. And a lot of it's in this actuator right here where the actuator, the whole actuator is moving back yeah. and forth. The universal joints are getting wear. See the universal joint down in there? Yes. See the, see the joint on the universal oh, joint yeah. moving around? 11,000 hours, they wear, huh? They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> okay. They're not horrible, but I mean, yeah. they're just doing this in flight the whole time. Oh. That's not good for them. Yeah. Yep. I can believe that. Play on this side too. Same place? 
That one's good on this side. Make sure there's bolts. Problem right there. Holding the, um, the is the bolt turning? What is going on? The nuts just coming off in my hand. The bolt is not turning. The nuts coming off. So that means you be tight, right? Yeah, I'm gonna try to tighten it up here and see if they'll stop the problem. Is that a self-locking nut? Yeah, but it ain't doing much. It, it needs to be yeah, replaced. It's, it's lost its self-locking. Still got the movement. But it's not this rod, and it's got to be the forward one. Okay, yeah, the other end of the tube? Yeah, the other end of the tube. So forward one on the left side, and you write this up here. Okay, so... The forward left rod, a uh, forward elevator, left left elevator, forward rod and bearing needs to be replaced, and the right elevator, the aft one. Okay. And both trim tabs have excessive play. That is approved. Yes, approved. Subway? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> We're going to figure out. Let me know where you're going. Go to Subway, not Turkey. Okay. <laughs> These all feel great. No problem there at all. Can you replace the rod ends without? You, you don't break into the tube, do you, when you replace the rod end? You just take the whole tube out. Okay. Take the front bolt off, take the back bolt off, and take the tube out and change them on the bench and put them gotcha. back in. Thank you. Not a big deal. So it's a rod end problem, not a tube problem. Yes, yes. It's Thank just you. the rod ends are just getting worn. Or this front bushing, you move that one real slow for me. Up there, up and down, just what a do little bit. The left the trim tab moving? Just move the left elevator a little bit. Okay. No, just, I mean, uh, barely move it. So you hear the noise. No, I don't. Not with my ears. Okay, let me do it here. Oh, yeah. Here. I'm just trying to I, I see hear what that. Do that. Keep doing that for me. I'm going to see if I can figure out where this is coming from. See, I can't stop it with the rod in. That's what... It's this front one. It's definitely the front one. Okay. So when you're taking them out, those are replacing both, right? As long as you find those that don't aren't sloppy to begin with. Yes. Why not to steal your airplane? Your keys in here. Pardon? I said I'm not to steal your airplane. Your keys in here. <laughs> yes. I have a key. You can believe I see places I see keys. <laughs> well, that that's a little subtle. Yeah. That's corrosion X. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I'd rather see that coming out than other stuff. Yeah, I, I, uh, I put it in our healthy doses. Good, 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 good. good. <laughs> and we use number one on those rollers. Which rollers? The uh, flat. Which rollers? These rollers? Or, no, the, no. or the switch rolls. I'm, 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 the, uh, I'm just testing you here. The micro I'm just testing you here. <laughs> yeah, the whole airplane. <laughs> okay, this all looks good here. Everything's installed correctly. Yeah, no problem. The bunnies over here are a little afraid right here. I 
keep an eye on this. What? Uh, the, the grass wrap? Yeah, the bonding jumper. See how frayed it is right there? It's starting to come apart. Just keep an eye on it. Yes. Oh, that, that's, that baby's almost started it. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, okay. It's not long for this world. All right. Okay, so. Get my creeper chicken on the controllers. So I have, I have four minutes for going. Good here. So rollers are in good shape. Good. We just had the rollers disintegrate on our 182 with ten thousand dollars. So we replaced them all. Sometimes you gotta work on them, don't you? Well, especially in the 182. Pretty good, yeah. Our members, uh, they still belong to the money, but they bought themselves a yeah, the model. And when I do like this, yeah. there's just a whole lot of gray. They have an auto pilot. Could there be? No. That's right. Either they've got work. a bad pulley, I don't know. and that's what I'm feeling for too, because I feel it all the time on airplanes where I get, I get a spot that's tight. And what we teach, I teach in my shop, and I teach guys if you're, when you're doing your inspection, rotate all your pulleys 180 degrees a year. Okay, yeah, so this so one you're wearing the, same spot. the other side. Yeah. If you turn a pulley and you hear it go click, 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 that means the cables are born into that pulley. That pulley needs to be replaced. So when you turn it that 180, if it click, 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 change the pulley. They're cheap. Yep. But when you got one binding up and you feel a bind in it like that. Well, it's constant. It's like, what's all this drag? Now, does it have gap seals? No. If it's got gap seals on the ailerons, that's where your drag's coming from. Well, I'll look. I'll, okay, I'll if it, you sure. don't have to talk about the gas seal. It's got those on it, that's where it's coming from. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look. Okay, but if it doesn't, something's binding up somewhere in a pulley. And 90% of the time, it's, it's the one in front of the rear spar where the aileron cable makes the turn and goes forward. Okay. It's a pulley about that big, it's under a heavy load, and that wears out, and the bearing that was bad in it, you'll see them. I've seen them sitting there crooked and all kinds of stuff. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's it, if the fuel uh, at the bottom of the uh, of the Duke's pump goes out, that's rather than go down your belly, it goes out there. Is that correct? No. Okay. That, right. fuel, that tube is located on the door, right? Yes. So what is that door? What do you do when you open that door? It just gives you access. To what? To the belly drain sump. Of the fuel selector valve. Correct. Okay, so any fuel coming out of that tube, that's your fuel selector is leaking or the drain valve is leaking. Okay. Okay? The other tube right here, this is your Do electric boost pump leak indicator. Okay. Okay. And we just had both pulled and overhauled and okay. replaced. Both? Both. Both both the selector and, okay, and the goose. If Get in the habit of when you drain the fuel on a Bonanza or a Baron or any odd Bonanza, when you open this door to drain the fuel, reach back and touch the end of the drain tube for the other, for the pump. Is that aft? 
No, that's the little tube right there. That's the other little tube. This tube right here. I'm with you. Just touch it every time you open the On door. On the outside or the bottom of it, right? This one right here. Gotcha. Just touch the end of the tube. Okay. If your finger comes back wet, your pump's leaking. We don't want that new no. overhaul. What's the two purposes for that pump? Well, one is boost, and uh, the other one is if your mechanical goes. Okay. And, and so what happened is that our, our members said, you know, I, I noticed that the, when, you, when you prime, it comes up to 10, maybe you'll sometimes to a four, and I said, you've been flying around with a boost pump that's only good for a four field. They said, yeah. I said, well, that's what it's for, so then we had it. Well, that being said now, yes. where's that pump located before or after the fuel cycle? This applies to your airplane too. Well, okay, the fuel cycle. Okay, that's where I think it's after. Why? Well, because the fuel cycle it just decides on, on where the fuel is coming from and where it's going to go back. But but the pressure. So after let's think the, about that pump does what? It. Puts pressure. Okay. It supplies the two purposes: to boost the engine and, and to keep the, the engine running if the if the main pump fails. Right. So it has to be after the fuel select because it has to feed from the tank selected, doesn't it? I think so. You're correct. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got it leaking and you're out somewhere, just shut the fuel off. Oh, stop okay. Leaking to keep it from leaking. Yeah. But if it starts to leak, yeah. it's going to leak all the time because fuel goes through it continuously because it's in line with the main engine line. Gotcha. You got a nice hot toasty exhaust pipe right in front of you. Oh, nice. Not a good test. But it was fitted. Oh, there's fitted. In fact, the outfit back east that did it ran out of kits or a duke fit. So we had to, what they did was find another one day overall. There's a place in Miami that you ever have to do it again called okay. CJ Aviation. Okay. They sell a pump. They sell it. It's their pump. Oh. That they, it's an STC approved pump and it's got different kinds of veins and you'll never have a problem again. Too late now. They're about twelve hundred dollars, but well, this wasn't cheap. <laughs> no, they're not cheap. No, they're not. All right, let me look at all the exhaust here. Okay. They got cones. Yeah, but this one is getting. It's hanging down. It's hanging down just about like this. You can look at it up here if you like. Uh, oh, oh, you, mean, you mean the coat is not concentric? No, it's it's hanging down towards the bottom like it's fixing okay. to go. This one's doing the same thing. It just may be the way this ones are put in, you know? Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the exhaust system that Farrell de Shannon uh, provided on the uh, engine diverter was very good. The what now? The exhaust system? Yeah, the whole exhaust system. Well, when, we went to the K to, when we went from the K to the E M engine. Yeah, that's just a stock system for a later engine, yeah. Yes, but, but a larger than the K. Yes, it's and a four bolt instead of a It lasted much longer than any visor thing we ever had. Yeah, the best, the new ones now made out of ink and L seem to last a lot. Yeah, it's, it's we use air, aerospace logo. Yeah. Um, this clamp's installed wrong on this side, and the clamp is installed wrong on the other side okay. also. Okay, uh, holding the pipe. Right here, you see the clamp here? Yes. Right. The clamp is designed to be tight around the pipe and the legs of the clamp touch together. Right now, they've got the brackets from the firewall inside the clamp, making the clamp too big. Got, so it, it's sliding? Yeah, it's sliding up and down. Okay, so, 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 so both of those ears should be against each other? Yes, it should be just like this. Gotcha. This is the clamp, I'm with the brackets on the outside. The other side, they've got spacers in it to put it between the clamp and the bracket for some reason. It's not correct installation. Thank you. <coughs> Are you doing 500 hour inspection on your mat? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, going down. No, that's 100 out. You need to go to the off position. That's yes. an AD. Yes. Uh, that the okay. pilot can sign off. Okay, and yes. 500 hour inspection on the mat. Yes. Mags. Okay, yes. you're sending them out for 500 hour inspection. Out, out to uh, Missoula. Okay, good.
Bubba opened the air door up there and a forward clamp on that hose like it's a little two four forward. When they do this conversion, Tim, from the K to an N, yeah. that's all, they all are like that. I know. It'll still open. It'll get them up to feed the engine. But on a K to an N conversion, there's you have no option unless you convert the whole intake to the new right. style. Right. So the door doesn't open as far as it does. No, it's it blocking open. part of it. Yeah. See it? Yeah. The, yeah. Clamp just blocks the door opens to the inside. Yes, The right. clamp just blocks part of it when you go from a K to an N converter. Yeah. Have you? I noticed you have a sealed battery. Yes. Do you have? Did you just stick it in, or did you get the STC? Well, we have the STC, and at annual they do the uh, load check. Okay, they have a capacity test. Yes. Load check. I would highly suggest moving these wires from where they are right here to the top. To the top. Higher up. Put them up here. Gotcha. Above the bracket. Correct. Because then, because you're blocking airflow to number one. Gotcha. And you're blocking airflow to number two. Yeah. Got it. Okay. You get better flow rate if you get these wires and put them up here. Okay. Put a spacer on them. Got put you. a long bolt with a spacer under the clamp so the wire comes over the top of the injector on it. So in essence, rather than have the angle clamp. down, have an angle up. Yeah, just turn the clamp around the other way and put gotcha. whatever you get and then put a spacer yeah. under it. So it sits up high enough so it clears this. Do not ever tie to a fuel line. Never. But they don't. Okay. And so that'll have this over. It'll be. That. It'll come across the top like this and gotcha. down to the plugs. And okay. you'll get much, much better airflow. Okay. So one and two. Ignition wires. Yeah. Okay. Just screw out the ignition wires on the top of the bracket. They're both the same way. In fact, these have even been rubbing on the fuel line over here. You can see marks in them when they've been rubbing. See the mark right here when they've been rubbing? See the mark right here? Yep, yep. That's yep. not a good thing, rubbing yep. on the fuel line. Gotcha. So in this case, uh, uh, well, we just route this line different. You can, you can move this fitting down a little bit of an angle and, okay. and just route up underneath it'll it. Be, just, it'll be over the, the fuel. That's fine. That's perfectly okay. Okay. You're trying to get airflow moving. Got it. You're missing two screws out of your muffler shroud? Yes. In, in fact, that. the other day when I looked at I found two two loose. So I, I had, ooh, I had, on, what? Look right here. I'm listening. See the mark in the heat sheet, in the, in the engine mount? Yes, it's been that way since uh, 1999. Okay. Well, it's, with, it's, it's, if your mechanic's okay with it, he is. Okay. Yeah, but he noticed that. The new rules say no marks at all. They used to have a, a procedure where you could dress it out to a certain limit, and the limit is gone. Overall, it looks pretty good. Thank you. Get it on jacks and see what we got. <laughs> hey, Zoe, I need a tension sticker, please. Ready to go up, Ryan. Okay. So this doesn't have extra power, but I can get it. I have an adapter. Yeah, an adapter. I like it. It's got a steel battery, so it's going to be hard to cut. Yeah. It's very long time in toolbox here, is what I use. Yeah, I've got a similar thing. I've got one that's on the board. I'm in my power unit. Oh, yeah. In real world, I'm going to go to the toolbox. I've got one with 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 the
Oh, it's only been that long. Yeah. His lifetime has been, been a few years. So yeah. Five years. And he's up. I need to take this Oh, he did? I'm trying to get in here. <laughs> and I uh, fly by and go to my truck. Yeah. Take a little more clear out of Paul City. Right, the condo hangers just south of here. Okay. And I'm going to run my. Ready, Howard? Say again? Yeah. One of your service clinics a long time ago, and I won't say where. They jacked up the nipple instead of the jackpot. Insurance covers that. that. That's what it's for, for yeah. pilot screw ups, right? Yeah, I guess. Yes. All right, I'm going to give you some tensions here. Okay. I'm going to run the car. Allow you what? The, the to make more tension. Say again. Okay, come around the back. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, so it's where the spring is on the retract rod? Right? Correct, right here. See how many washers they got on it? One belongs on there, but they've got it yes, looks I like see one, two, three, four additional. Okay. And max is five. So, so what's the problem? You need it to get the right uh, tension? Yeah, well, or depression? Well, if you try to put that many washers, you change the spring. Okay. Because the more washers you put, the more load you're putting on the spring, and you're at 57 pounds, so you're up in the up above the middle anyway. So everybody thinks the higher is better. That's not. Okay. So the washers on at least the left hand uh, retract rod. The, those rods are new in '99 since it, they got. Well, that spring is not that old. That spring looks is. like it really. Yeah, it is. Well, it's That's been well taken care of. Okay. It's good take. It's been taken care of. Then. Well, I don't know. I <laughs> this is incorrect. You can't see the end of the uplock yet. This is part of the AD uh, about the uplock rollers. Yes. You're supposed to be able to see the end of the cable to inspect it every pre-flight. I can't see the end of the cable. Okay. 
I'm going to try to move them. Sometimes I can move them. If I can, I want to move them first. Yeah. And that's my fault. I, I do that on purpose. We've had them, that wire all but break before. Well, afraid. that's the whole idea why you look at it on pre flight. Yeah, I, I was afraid that I, I wanted some stream release. No, that's, uh, that's not for that. There's an AD that calls for this. There, that's where it should be, right there. Okay. Now so, I can so see can the see end it. of the cable. Gotcha. I'm with Every you. single pre flight, check the roller, check the end of the cable. If the cable's frayed, fly the airplane, just don't put the gear up. Get it someplace you can get it fixed. Gotcha. Okay? I'll make sure the other side's the same way. I did not look at it when I was over there. Okay. Alright, let's look at the nose for it. Sixty-one. Six-one. So you're six pounds above the minimum. Okay, fifty-five pounds or higher, and you're six-one? Six-one, yes, sir. Okay. Right nose gear door aft, aft hinge bushing is worn out. Um, there's a new company, um, it's not new, I'm trying to think of the name. Did they use the Phenolic or? No. You remember the, stop. Remember the name of the company in Canada? Nope. Advertises with us. No, but I got a magazine I can go look at. Yeah, they're the ones that's, um, A, B, M, but they sell a nylon. I've seen it It's a kit. Yes. It comes with a drill bit and everything. Okay. If you're going to fly this airplane all like you're doing, just put the kit in it and you'll never do it again. Okay. God, what is the name of that place? Have a look. Yeah, nose gear door bushings. You see, it's, they advertise it. I can't think of what it's called. Okay. They're up in Canada. Okay. I've seen them Yeah. Take the door off. Oh, really? Just take the back hinge loose. Right. And take the rod end loose. Right. And you can hang the you can hang the rear hinge right outside of the airplane. Drill it without even taking the front one out. So you don't have to do both. You don't have to. The front was never wear out. Oh, really? You can do the front ones if you want, but then you got to take the whole door off. Well, that's not very good. Okay. So it's the, it's the rear guard. Find it? No. Let me look at the advertiser's index. There's a picture. He always has a picture. Oh, yeah. I can see it in my mind exactly what it is, but I cannot remember the name. Marsh Brothers. Marsh Brothers Aviation. Marsh Brothers Aviation. Pardon? Marsh Brothers Aviation. They're on page seven. Right, you got a lot of tension, right? so, so, so why is it that only the rear? Because that's where the main load is for the, for the rides off. Oh, the rides are the out. Rides on the outside Thank of the engine, and that's what moves it up and down all the time. Right. Front never wear out, but I mean, it's still not a big deal. Let's take the bolt out right here. If you want to take the whole door off, just take the door off and put them in both sides and you're done. When you get the kit, it's enough to do the whole door. Okay, well, so, so I replaced, I replaced the bushings on the drawers uh, within months later or something. 
rip the doors off because they felt the wrong flap so it's fun. Do a cut and go. Where are you at, Howard? I'm in the cockpit. Oh, okay. All right, let's unstow the hand crank, please. Turn it counterclockwise. A little over a half. Okay, that's too much. We should be between an eighth and a quarter of a turn on the mechanical hand crank for our dynamic brake. And so how do you adjust that? Uh, okay, there's a switch is under the pilot seat. Yes, I know. Okay, that. you have to adjust. Yours is a bendable tab. Gotcha. Okay. On you the bend the tab on the micro switch yes. itself. You bend the tab aft a little bit and let the gear travel slightly farther. Okay, so right now it's a half. It needs to be less. Eighth to a quarter. And that will help your over center tensions. Every, that'll help everything come up just a little bit more. So, so that's a half rotation, right? A half of a turn, yes. Yeah, a half turn, okay. And whenever you rig the gear on this thing, you've got to have a power unit on it. Some sort of 24, at least yes. 14 volts We're regulated. Right. Not a battery charger. Oh, not, really? No, because a battery charger does not provide 14 volts. It provides 13 to charge the battery. Oh, See, right. this provides 14 volts regulated. Gotcha. I didn't appreciate that. If you're gonna, have, if you got several airplanes that are, is your 182 12 volts too? Yeah. You buy these for about 300 bucks from Spruce, and then you got one that'll work on both airplanes. We're not. Gonna, we're gonna have other people do that. Okay. I'm okay. getting too old for that. Okay. Gotcha. All right. It, 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 we're talking about the hand crank, right? Yes. Okay. Just gear down travel needs to be adjusted to one eighth to one quarter. All right, Howard. Show the handle, please. Okay, you're handling the up position. Battery switch on. Battery switch off. What's that horn telling me? It's telling you that uh, you got your throttle back to the point that you should have your gear down. Okay, push the throttle in, Howard, all the way. Turn the battery switch back on. Throttles full forward. Correct. And they, but the gear are down. So what? Are, have you disconnected something? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. What I'm what I'm trying to point out yes. here, I have the safety switch disconnected right here. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the airplane thinks it's on the ground. Yes. The airplane thinks it's on the ground because if I pull that switch down, then that airplane thinks it's in the air. So that horn is telling us, hey. You put the gear handle up on the ground. But what I want to point out here is that's the same horn that tells you what you said, yeah. the throttle's retarded with the gear up. So you have to be very aware of where your flight condition is. Okay, so, okay, because this isn't compressed. Well, no, yeah. it's because it isn't pulled down. R right, but, but if it were on the ground, it would be compressed. It would be pulled down. Yeah, yeah. it would be compressed like it is now. Right. Okay, and it would not, the horn would be coming on, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And you only have one on this airplane. All the later models have one on each gear. I know. Okay, will you hook up the squat switch? Sure. All right, crank it up till I tell you to stop power, please. Coming up. They also have a bushing for this kit, don't they? Do do That's now. good. Yes, they do. They do, but those parts don't have to wear out. Yeah, well, we need to stop on it. Okay, good. That's good. You can't do anything at all by losing. These inboard doors are pretty loose. They are because at 99, when they uh, brought the gear up on a touch and go, these doors got drawn down to here, and they touched the tire and formed a V, so it just ran on the. Uh, on the sidewall of okay, the Okay, so what I'm talking about, this. Well, those got replaced. Oh, was oh, that too much swap for you? Yeah, it should move over an eighth of an inch at the bottom. I'm moving almost an inch. So, where do you pick that up? You have three attach points. You have one right here at the rod end. Right. You have an idler, which looks like a pork chop, on the back of the forward spar which the, in, the outboard rod goes to the idler, okay. then there's another rod that goes to the top of the actuator. Okay. 
I would highly suspect the rod, the bolt that holds the inner rod to the top of the actuator is loose. Because a lot of mechanics look at that bolt. It's a clevis bolt with a cotter pin and a castellated right. nut. But it has a bushing in the middle of it. And what you want to do is tighten the bolt down onto the bushing. Oh, so, gotcha. And you want the rod to rotate on the bushing, right. not the bolt to rotate on the actuator. And I would be willing to bet you money that that bolt is loose. Okay. So, eighth inch instead of what? Quarter inch at the max. Okay. Thank you. I mean, about, this, about like that right there is all you should have. I mean, you, okay. you shouldn't have any movement. Got it. Seats out and move everything off. Uh, Put, it just like this. Put it just like this. Put it just like this. Bring it on back. Have somebody out here move the door and watch the pivot points, the three points where they attach. Okay. Uh, You'll see the movement. Okay. So, so when you're looking with everything out, with the, with the interior gutted, are you looking down ahead of the spar, after the spar? Come here, let me show you one slide. I'm going to take it. Yes. That's the top of the gearbox. Gotcha. Retract rods, doors. Right, gotcha. There's a clevis bolt that goes right through here that attaches that arm, that rod to that door. Yes. 90% uh, of the time that bolt's loose. Gotcha. And this is the little tiny sort of wraparound tube here. It's just a, it's just a piece of tubing is all it is. Yeah. And it goes to the idler. Yeah. I always thought rather than tubing, it was looked like it was a wrapped around tube. Anyway, but whatever. Okay. That's, you're it's thinking there. of this one? No, no. No, no, no. That's the retract. Right? I know that because I, I left a creeper on the floor once and uh, was psyching the gear you bend it. and bent it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the door attached. Gotcha. The so little guy. In, put a screwdriver on it. The same thing for the retract rods. Okay. Those are bolts with cotter pins, but they go on to a bearing. Yes. You want them tight. You want the bearing to take the load, not the bolt. Gotcha. I understand. So anything that goes through a bearing, you okay. want it tight. Tight, tight. Okay, so the rod's end of the spider. Yeah. Okay. Get retract rod boot is torn. See the big hole in it right here? I, big hole I, in the I'm boot. not surprised. Uh, buy a boot from Performance Aero. Gotcha. Get a black boot. And try to get it on when you put it on. Stretch it a little tighter under the fastener so it gets it a little bit flatter. Gets like, what's happening here is a nose wheel's rubbing on it. Oh. Gotcha. Nose wheel's rubbing on the boot and just tearing it up. Got it. Because it's so floppy? Yeah. Got it. Or you can go to a salvage yard and find the later model airplanes did away with the long boot and went to a short boot. Mm -hmm. And it's a metal box for the last half and then a oh. short boot about this long. Gotcha. I convert a lot of airplanes over. I just get a, get a box out of a wrecked airplane and put a box in there. It's the same. It just, there's no STC or anything because you're just doing like a later model airplane. Just slopping the rod end right there. Is that okay? yeah, no, it's not. Mine are like that. So, so that's the retract like rod, it's not the steering it's rod. Right? It's, it's like a ball of socket joint. Yeah. Just tighten it up a little bit. It's like all platforms are the same way. Yeah, just tighten them up. So it's a retract rod boot, not the steering. No, it's retract rod boot. Yeah. Okay. Door. 
those rod ends are a little bit loose on the doors. They just need tightening up. You yes. got to tighten the ball and socket. Okay. All right, Howard. Your hand on the down position. Battery switch on. system nice and tight okay battery switch off unstow the hand crank and turn it clockwise now since we did not have a power unit on it i expect a little more traffic oh more well, that's because it's not up it's not rotating as fast yeah. it did, it did almost a half okay that's a little more than i expected so next time you have it in the shop and on jacks Get a 14 volt regulated power supply, hook it up to the battery so you can do that, and just see what you have. And if you need to adjust them both, uh, just adjust the switches. Okay. So when you're, when you're swinging the gear, 14 volt power. 14 volt regulate. Okay. You ever landing gear rigging guy? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, that explains all of that right in there. Uh, Set it back at about a quarter now so I can check my clearances. Good up in there. All the re all the adjustments look good. At a, he said it at a quarter of a turn, okay. and all the all the checks in the off up lock cable, the up lock roller. You have to reswing things. Huh? You have to reswing things when you do that. Right? When you do what? what? Mm -hmm. On the no. spider. We're not going to adjust anything on the spider. Well, you're going to tighten stuff on the spider. Yes, but that's just the inboard doors. Okay. That's not going to change any Thank of the rigging. You. It's Thank not you. enough to change the rigging. But what you'll find a lot of times when you're on, once you hook it up to a power supply or have the alternator online, is if you come back, you'll grab your inboard doors when they're this loose, and when you readjust it, if they've adjusted the, the, the rod ends to compensate for that wear, then the doors are going to be really tight. Okay. If on our GPI, we show 14 volts when we're on a charger. That's perfect. 14, but does it stay at 14 volts? Well, I, I can't tell you. That. See, these are these are regulated. They have just equipment in them that says, okay, I'm below, I'm going now below 14. I'm going to put a little bit more to maintain 14. Okay. Okay. But a battery charger is not acceptable. Okay. Well, black or travel. Do you want that power on? No, we're good. Okay. Okay, I'm going to check. Come around the back. I can see it much better. I just bought a G-Lock. Okay, same thing. I'm looking for 10 to 20 thousand between the uplock roller and the uplock bracket. So I'm, that's a 20 going in and a 20 is snug. It's perfect. Okay. But if this cable, which is the uplock cable, has to be checked from inside under the seats, if that cable is not correct, this is not going to be correct. You've got to get the cable where it belongs first before you ever set this. Then I'm checking, I'm making sure the stop bolt right here, this is your safety bolt right here that touches the strut. Mm -hmm. It should be on the strut. It, it, I'm not saying it's adjusted correctly, but it is touching the strut. And I find many of them that aren't even touching the strut. And if the gear goes up too far, it's going to punch a hole in the upper wing skin. Then go up here and check your side. Make sure you have a minimum of 160 clearance between the knee brace and the upper wing skin. Okay. This one's okay. See how the door fits. Looks good. Okay. All right, Howard, crank it down on the tape stop. That's 
good. First bolt I've seen today. Huh? Looks good. He's got the new style rods. Have the rod ends ever been changed on this? Yes, in '99. Okay. And, and, and that that uh, that what we, that arm? Yeah. It just split. Well, that happens all the time. Yeah. It it's looks all fairly new. Yeah. It, it looks fairly new. Yeah, and uh, and the side cowl's got replaced okay. as well. Yeah, this right. And the doors. You want this bolt tight right here. Okay. But it has to be checked with the gear parts out of the wheel well. And you have to take your foot and take the weight off of the rod. So you can, otherwise you have a false tension because the gear is pulling on it, giving you a false tension. If that bolt is loose, it'll sit there and work back and forth like this and bend that arm. If you look at my table over, you'll see some arms that are actually twisted because they're so, they got the bolt got so loose it twisted the arm. with a cotter pin on the top. Okay. And it's very difficult to put the cotter pin back in and get it tight. I've seen them installed the other way with the cotter pin on the bottom, but then you've got to take the whole arm off the actuator and everything to do it. It's more trouble to do that than it is to do it the right way. Okay. All right, Howard, you clear down. Yes, sir. something we didn't check Howard? The throttle switch. We'll just make sure we do it when we do it finally. That was the that was the safety horn. Tell you what, just crank it up a little bit. Just check the power. Uh, you're gonna have to pull the circuit breaker to do it, but don't worry about it. Just run it all the way up. Okay. When do you hit 12 inches by the time you're flaring, right? I don't know. I'm not That's looking at it. pretty close. So set it up around 15. Oh, safety, oh. Well, I bring it back to 15 in order to descend. I hate to have that happen. Okay. So. Well, a lot of times it's a good idea. If, if you just plan your descent a little farther out, maybe descend at 17. And it's another good gear indication. When you get on down, when you put your gear down, if, you, if the horn's going off at 15 inches, when the gear goes down and locked, the horn goes away. So that's one indication your gear's down. You have another indication visual, and you have another indication by light. So that's three separate things that's telling you the gear's down and locked. But people can still deny all of them, right? Yes, they can. They can. Okay. Let's hook up the doors, Brian, and we're good. Tell you what, I gotta do a final. Let's hook it up. Give me a couple of minutes. Steven just said something to you. Who? Your son. Don't lean on the plane on deck. So. Oh. <laughs> Is he watching this or something? Yeah, say hi. <laughs> hi, Steven. <laughs> what is he still doing at work? Hi, Jimmy Denver looks okay. The forward Jimmy Denver bushing is worn completely out over here. Come look at this. Yeah. The big one or the little one? This one. Look at oh, it. Oh, the little one. Yeah. That's where all the plays come from the steering. That's all free play. Bushing take care of that? This one's worn out here. This bolt's probably loose here. The bushing, this one needs to be, the whole shimmy damper's working. If I hold the shimmy damper back, yeah. look at the difference. Okay, so, so. Both bushings. Both bushings. Yep. Let me see what else we got here. And you think that, 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 that this casting here is. Casting's not, not probably fine. There's a bushing in it. Gotcha. I understand. Okay. You got a little bit of play in the yoke bolt, but not bad. Okay, steering door looks okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, this doesn't look bad. Looks pretty good. So, uh, not horrible, just that. We'll get the door hooked up here and uh, do a final swing, and you're good to go. Are the screws keeping the uh, the, uh, the heater muffler shroud? Are they special screws? I'm just saying, it's still PK screws. Okay. You put the same thing in the corrosion bed from the heat. Okay. Thank you. They're just short PK, number 8 PKs or number 10 PKs, whatever's got in it. Okay. No, no problem. No problem. I'm here on it. I'm here on it. I think they're number 10. Let me see what this one's got in there. <laughs> they already got it closed up. I can't tell. I can't see it. Yeah, it's already closed. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to be able to clear up, Howard. Okay. Power on, clear up. Get a This will go away when you do those nose gear door bushings. Okay. See that right there? Somebody's bent the lip of it up to try to take it up. When they replace the gear doors, it's not a good job. I can tell. The bushing will help with some of that. Okay. All right, Howard, you clear down. Gear coming down. Bring the flaps up, you want? Okay. Questions? No. Pretty well overwhelming. Thank Sorry, you. I didn't mean to. No, but you know, I missed something that I interpreted as you retiring. From who? So from this job, so I called no. the office yeah. and they said there was someone else. Yes. Bob Olson. Well, thank you for not retiring. Oh, yes. yeah, I've already retired once. Okay. So, but I do wonder. Do you ever wear knee pads? Sometimes. I have a daughter who replaces those. Do you? You don't need to. No, I don't want to have that job. Okay, well, the, the new pads might prolong that. I've been doing this so long now that I it's, know. you know. So I can't Well, I do that now. When I worked at Delta, I, 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 I have, I'm turning 70 this year. And I don't think I've lost as much high frequency from being around the Jets for too many years. But I always warm it here at my place. 